Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. The January 28, 2008 special recess meeting of the City Council is called to order. This meeting has been properly noticed and posted in compliance with the open meeting law. These proceedings are being presented live on KCLV Cable Channel 2 and are closed captioned for our hearing impaired viewers. The Council meeting, as well as all other KCLV programming, can be viewed on the Internet at www.kclv.tv. The proceedings will be rebroadcast today at 1 p.m. on Wednesday at 9 a.m. and 8 p.m. Friday at 4 a.m., Saturday at 7 p.m., Sunday at 7 a.m., and the Monday at 1 p.m. This building is protected by a state-of-the-art sprinkler system, so uh, if, in fact, uh, uh, alarms should go off, please exit the building, and then there will be folks out there with our marshal's office We'll be able to tell you when we can re-enter. We have no reason to believe that uh, th this will ever take place, but in an abundance of caution, I've been advised to make this statement at the beginning of, of every meeting. So uh, with that, um, we come to item number two, which is a hearing, discussion, and possible action regarding complaint seeking disciplinary action against veterans of foreign wars, post number 10057, located at 1905 North 8th Street in Las Vegas, Clark County, Nevada, for alleged violations of the Las Vegas Municipal Code. This is in Ward 5. Uh, before we begin, uh, I'd like the record to reflect that uh, at our regular council meeting, uh, we had a request uh, that uh, we adjourn uh, the hearing uh, until uh, a later date in order to allow uh, Rex Fell, uh, the attorney for the Post uh, to be properly prepared uh, to respond to the uh, allegations that the city attorney uh, is going to present, and uh, based on the reasonableness of that request, it was granted, and it was set over to today uh, at a time certain of 10 a.m., so we're starting on time. Uh, I would like the record to reflect that um, uh, I have received a... Uh, I guess a flyer is the best way, and I'll make this part of the record to describe the document. It says, Save Our VFW Post 10057 Community Rally, uh, Complimentary Food and Drink. If you don't want our black veterans who risk their lives for this country to lose their post, come out and express your support. When? Tuesday, January 15, 2008. The time, 5 p.m. to 6.30 p.m. And where? The VFW Post 10057 in 1905 H Street, Las Vegas, Nevada. It goes on further to say, don't let City Hall close our VFW Post 10057. Help support our black veterans at the City Hall Council meeting when? Wednesday, January 16, 2008. Time, 11 a.m. where? The City Hall Council Chamber, 400 East Stewart Avenue, Las Vegas, Nevada. We need everyone's support at City Hall on Wednesday to keep our West Las Vegas Historic American Landmark. If uh, you make this part of the record, I, I just want the record to reflect the following, uh, that um, uh, no one uh, is here to close down the uh, VFW post. That's not the purpose of this hearing. Let's make that perfectly clear. Uh, we value uh, the service of um, all members of our community, black, white, yellow, it doesn't matter to me, who uh, represent the United States of America in uh, protecting uh, us uh, and our freedoms 
uh, as veterans uh, of this great country of ours. So the issue is not uh, closing down uh, the VFW. Uh, let's make that perfectly clear. Uh, uh, somehow there's a tendency to, to mix up what this council is supposed to be judging. We just had a perfect example of that, and that was regarding the flagpole. There was a flagpole out there on West Sahara uh, with um, a flagpole. You don't even have to bother with the city council if you want to do something with the flagpole. If the flagpole is going to be 40 feet or less in height, uh, there was a automobile dealer who wanted to put up a 100 foot flagpole, and uh, there were some complaints uh, from the neighbors, and uh, we uh, uh, voted that uh, we were not going to permit the 100 foot fla flagpole there. That was no comment as far as our love for the American flag, and uh, it was just a matter as to how high uh, it was going to be. Uh, this is very similar in nature. Um, uh, this is not a question as to closing down the VFW. That is a non-issue. The issue before us today is the liquor license at the VFW. And uh, that is what is going to be the subject of a disciplinar disciplinary uh, proceeding, and not uh, the closure of the building. Uh, we want a place for our veterans to be able to congregate and to be able to do positive things in our community. So with that being said, uh, I'm going to turn to Mr. Henry and uh, ask you to make uh, your opening remarks. Thank you, Mayor. Members of the Council, <clears throat> before we proceed, uh, with your indulgence, I'd like to lodge with the clerk uh, proof of service of notice of today's hearing. All right, this lodge. As you stated, Your Honor, we're uh, here today uh, based on a disciplinary complaint submitted by the Director of Finance pursuant to law, uh, alleging that our licensee has operated his business in such a, a way as to be a uh, public and uh, private nuisance and that that is contrary to law. Before you is a complaint for disciplinary action that sets forth uh, a number of violations uh, uh, to support this allegation and also the um, relevant law. I would like to, <coughs> before uh, I turn to uh, proving up the facts in this matter to direct your attention to a, a white notebook that I've uh, placed before each one of you with the cover sheet of the complaint for disciplinary action in this matter. There's one at the podium for Mr. Bell as well. Under tab one of that notebook is a copy of a complaint for disciplinary action. Under tab two of the notebook are the two answers that uh, were uh, served on the city attorney's office and on the city clerk by VFW Post 1057 uh, to that complaint. Uh, the earliest uh, is first uh, dated January 10th and the next one uh, which was lodged uh, uh, by Mr. Bell is uh, dated uh, January 24th. The reason that I direct your attention <coughs> Uh, to this is to be found under uh, tab 3 and if you turn to the last two pages under tab 3 you'll see uh, documents entitled uh, Affidavit of Service and that's the original service of uh, the order approving complaint and notice of hearing with the complaint for disciplinary action uh, on the resident agent uh, Claude Brown um, and the uh, principal uh, officer, uh, Albert Young of VFW Post 10057. You can see that they were uh, both served uh, December 7, 2007. If, if you would then turn back to the first page under tab 3, uh, there is a copy of Las Vegas Municipal Code 6.88.080, which provides uh, that um, the respondent has 20 days after service of the complaint uh, to file an answer. And as you can see, he was very late in doing that. The next page has a copy of Las Vegas Municipal Code 6.88.100 uh, entitled Failure to Answer or Appear. And it relevantly provides failure to timely file his answer or failure of a respondent or his counsel to appear at the hearing shall constitute a admission of all matters and facts contained in the complaint filed with respect 
to such respondents. In such cases, the City Council may take action based upon such admission or upon any other evidence, including affidavits, and without any further notice whatever to respondent. I would submit to you that the allegations in the complaint have been proven as a matter of law. I would propose, in summary fashion, to provide uh, uh, evidence to support that uh, in the record uh, in the proceeding uh, here today. All right. Well, thank you, Mr. Henry. I'm going to um, treat the answer to the complaint for disciplinary action uh, uh, filed by Mr. Bell uh, and date stamped uh, January 24, 2008, as uh, being sufficient um, uh, response to the um, disciplinary complaint, and we'll go forward with the hearing as though it had been timely filed. Mr. Bell, you have an opening statement? Uh, no, uh, I thought, uh, Your Honor, Mr. Henry was going to put on his uh, he is, evidence. He is, but if you'd like to be heard, I'd be happy to hear from you now. Uh, but you can certainly reserve that until after Mr. Henry presents his evidence. Well, the only thing, Your Honor, I can say at this time is we um, certainly do not feel that DFW 10057 is a uh, public nuisance. The other allegation in there that uh, it has been operated in Ill some illegal manners at times is some of that is correct uh, things that need to be corrected and that since it's a privileged license we are well aware that we're lucky to have the license and uh, after many discussions with the members uh, we have a, uh, also proposals uh, for correcting uh, the errors that seem to have been ongoing over uh, the last two or three or four years all right, well, I appreciate that, but um, that should have been done, as far as I'm concerned, the proposals and the negotiation before we convened here today. Uh, that may be something that you want to address uh, at a uh, later time in the hearing, but uh, we're going to go forward with the hearing. And Mr. Henry? Thank you, Mayor. Uh, with permission of the Council, I call Jim D. Fiore as my first witness. All right, we're going to swear in the witnesses today. Mr. Bridges. I do. Thank you. Would you state your name, please, and spell your last name for the council? My name is Jim DeFiore, uh, D I capital F I O R E. How are you employed, Mr. DeFiore? I'm employed, employed by the City of Las Vegas as the Business Services Manager for Finance and Business Services. Allow me to direct your attention to a document that I have before you entitled Complaint for Disciplinary Action in the Matter of the Department of Finance and Business Services on behalf of the City of Las Vegas versus the Veterans of Foreign Wars, VFW post number 10,057. Have you seen this document before? Yes, I have. And are you familiar with its content? Yes, I am. Allow me to direct your attention to line 21 of the first page where there's an allegation as to the type and number of the uh, liquor license at issue. Is that information correct based on records uh, that uh, you hold in your office and use in the normal course of your government business? Yes, it is. <clears throat> Turning to page 3, from page 3, line 10, through page 6, line 25, there's a number of allegations of uh, illegal conduct uh, having to do with uh, li this liquor licensee. Are you familiar with those? Yes, I am. Indeed, uh, in performing your duties, did you compile um, reports and documents uh, from your section and also receive reports and documents from the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department having to do with this matter and submit them to my office? Yes, I did. And uh, um, are the allegations in the complaint that I've referred to true and correct based on your understanding of those police reports and those documents uh, held by your office? Yes, they are. <clears throat> I've asked you if the allegation concerning the um, liquor license on page one is correct. 
and that's recited as a non-profit club general alcoholic beverage license. Um, allow me to direct your attention to page 7, uh, where there's a recitation of substantive law. Would you explain to the council, please, um, what type of license this is and what restrictions, if any, there might be on it pursuant to Las Vegas Municipal Code 6.50.150? This is a license approved by the City Council that is issued to a nonprofit organized uh, charter um, for the sale of alcoholic beverages on the premises to members only or to members, uh, guest members of those members. <clears throat> and does the code require that members be bona fide members and that their guests be bona fide guests? Yes, it does. Is there any requirement imposed by law or, or uh, by your office on such licensees to maintain a membership law? There is a requirement by code that there is uh, 100 members um, that have to be uh, eligible for this type of license and the logging of members uh, is done so for us to maintain um, assurance that the, that membership is being maintained at 100. As I understand the code, um, liquor can be served by such a licensee to a bona fide guest. Is it your understanding that for someone who isn't a member to legally be served liquor, he has to be guest, a guest of a member and that member has to be present? That has been the standard that we've applied uh, for the number of years that this license has been uh, part of the city code uh, issuing for issuance of a business license under the alcoholic beverage code. And would that be... Let me ask you this, uh, uh, Mr. DeFiore. Uh, uh, nothing on the face of uh, uh, the municipal code states that the member has to be present as long as the guest is a bona fide guest of that member. You're correct, Mayor. All right, thank you. And has the custom you described been the, uh, the custom for the last 40 years? That is correct. And has this, your understanding of this custom such that it not only has to do with this licensee, but all licensees for the last 40 years that have held nonprofit club general alcoholic beverage licenses? That's correct. <clears throat> Let me turn your attention back to page 6, line 19. Um, there's an allegation about uh, calls for service to the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department between lines 19 and lines 25 of page 6. Would you tell us, please, what calls for service are? Uh, calls for service are generated calls either from constituents, from employees, from other types of sources that would generate a, uh, an inspection or a, um, a, a field stop by, in this case, a patrol officer to that particular location. Looking at the number of calls for service that are alleged, uh, as I said, on page 6 between lines 19 and lines uh, 25, do you have an opinion whether or not uh, this number of calls for service uh, per year seems excessive for this type of licensee in the city of Las Vegas? Uh, yes, in my opinion, this is, this is very high for this type of business operation. Um, 188 calls for service uh, between those 2005 and 2007 uh, is extremely high for that, for that type of business. Thank you. I have no further questions. And Mr. Bell, cross-examination. Uh, yes, Your Honor. Uh, to Mr. DeFiori, um, Mr. DeFiori, some of those calls uh, could have come from the pay phones outside of that building, correct? That's a possibility. Okay. Um, he did have pay phones. Uh, that's all I would have to ask. All right, fine. Does the council have any member uh, questions they have of Mr. DeFiori? All right, you're excused, Mr. Deacon. 
I call Officer Lewis as the city's next witness. Would you swear in, please? Could you state your name, please, and spell your last name? Officer Paul Lewis, L-E-W-I-S. You're a Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Officer? Yes, sir. How long have you uh, been a police officer? For three years. <clears throat> During the course of that three years, have you had an opportunity um, to answer calls or conduct investigations having to do with VFW Post 10,057? Yes, I have. For what period of that three years have uh, you uh, gained familiarity with uh, this VFW post? Over the past two and a half years. <clears throat> Did you bring with you today some photographs? I do. Uh, would you get them, please? And could we have the overhead activated? Have you and other officers had occasion to go to the VFW post and uh, ask to see uh, their membership log? Yes, we did. And uh, did you do that on the 10th of January 2008? Yes, we did. <clears throat> and was the log showed to you? Yes, we saw the guest log. Uh, did you uh, uh, photograph or was it photographed in your presence? Yes, it was. Apparently nobody can. That seems not good. very good. Why don't you tell us what's on the piece of paper? Would you describe, please, uh, what's in that photograph? Um, on January 10th of 08, did the inspection at the VFW Post 157. Uh, it was a head count of 25 people inside the bar at the time, and there were two members signed in. I asked the bartender uh, if she can identify the first name listed on there, which is Peter Gunn. She stated that Peter Gunn was dead and has been dead for some time now. As for the second name on there, she did not know who that was. Did she say anything else about Peter Gunn? that he had died a long time ago. All right. <clears throat> During the two and a half years that you've been going to DFW Post 10,057, um, did you gain familiarity with who the members were? I became familiar with the uh, bar manager and assistant bar manager and some of the security officers there. <coughs> Is there a demographic, sort of an age range of customers that you tended to see there when you would go there? Um, mostly African American, uh, all ages from probably, I would say, low 20s to 40s, 50s. Did you look over your right shoulder at uh, the people in the room? Do you see a number of them uh, wearing uh, hats and other logos referring to the veterans of foreign wars? Yes, I do. When you would go to VFW Post 10,057 and serve the people drinking there, would you sometimes see people with uh, these logos present? No, I do not. Never? Never. Never over the course of two and a half years? Never did I. <coughs> Have 
you ever responded to VFW Post 10057 to investigate a crime uh, where um, you or other officers uh, uh, with you uh, seized firearms uh, or uh, items that you believe to con contain controlled substances? Yes, I have. And did you photograph some of these? I did not take those photos. Were some of these uh, firearms or items believed to control consumption? I'm going to object to these photos. Uh, there's no showing of who took them well, and where they were taken. And uh, we're going to, uh, your objections noted, and we're going to put about as much weight on what's taking place here as it deserves. Yes, uh, uh, officer, would you be kind enough to use the handheld mic so everybody could hear you? Let me go back. Um, did you tell us that you have responded to VFW Post 10057 on some occasions where during the course of Metro's investigation, firearms and items believed to contain controlled substances were seized? Yes, I did. And on one of those occasions uh, were photographs of the firearms and the controlled substances um, or items believed to control, contain controlled substances taken? Yes, I was. And did you bring uh, uh, one or two of these photographs with you here today? Yes, I did. Where did you get these photographs from? These photos were taken from uh, got an event number here, 0801, excuse me, correction. The event number is 0707302747 by Officer Conk. So did you get these uh, photographs uh, from the files of the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department under a specific event number? Yes, I did. Do you have familiarity with this event number? Yes, I do. And would you describe how you have familiarity with it? I read the arrest reports. Now, do the arrest reports refer to a matter that's set forth in the disciplinary complaint? Yes, it did. And what's the date of that matter? It's going to be July 07, uh, July 30th, 07. So, directing your attention to page 5, line 12 of the disciplinary complaint, would you read just to yourself that, that uh, well, let me ask you this uh, Officer Lewis uh, did you participate in the events uh, on July 30th 2007 the particular event no sir alright so basically uh, we could read it you don't have to read it alright your honor would you tell us yes me? excuse me you actually that uh, this uh, is showing us reported to be weapons and money, and the July 30th event uh, does not uh, indicate any. Well, yes, on, excuse me, it does. It says, of course, semi-automatic handguns were seized. I'm sorry. Would you tell us, please, uh, what appears in the photograph in the overhead now? In the photograph, you have, uh, I'll point to it right here. A semi-automatic 22 caliber pistol with the uh, extended magazine. You have one 9 millimeter pistol. You have, I don't have the dollar amount of the uh, cash. But as far as uh, narcotics, you have 6.4 grams of positive ODB tested cocaine and 9.5 grams of marijuana. You said positive some kind of test. Would you, what is that? It's a test we do to uh, confirm the uh, narcotic substance. Did you ever go to VFW Post 10057 and see a CSN income tax service truck there? Yes, I did several times. And uh, on one of those occasions, 
um, were photographs taken by the Metropolitan Police Department? Yes, there was. And did you bring those photographs with you here today? Yes, I did. And did they likewise uh, come from the files of the Metropolitan Police Department under a specific event number? Yes, they did. What's the date of that event number? The yeah, date is July 11th of 07. Oh, excuse me, uh, November 14th of 07. November 14th of uh, 07. <coughs> Let me show you a photograph. Is this the CSN income tax service uh, truck that you saw on that date? Yes, it is. And uh, what caused you to uh, be at DFW Post 10057 on that day? There was a large crowd in the park lot. By large, how many do you mean? Let's we'll say probably 20, 30 people. <coughs> When you responded there, besides looking at the income tax service truck, did you look inside the truck? I sure did. Let me show you another photograph. Does that accurately depict something that was inside the truck when you looked inside it on that day? Yes, it does. And would you describe what that is, please? That was a deep fryer used to cook shrimp and fish. And was that uh, shrimp and fish uh, being given to and consumed by people in the uh, parking lot? Yes, it was. Did it appear to be a commercial transaction, by which I mean were the people paying for it? Yes, they were. <clears throat> Allow me to show you another photograph. When you looked inside the uh, truck, uh, did you see a cooler? Yes, I did. And does uh, um, that photograph accurately depict the cooler that you saw? Yes, it does. <clears throat> In that cooler, um, um, are there um, cans of beer? Yes, there is. Were those cans of beer being provided to the people in the parking lot? Yes, it was. And did that likewise appear to be a commercial transaction, by which I mean the people were paying for the beer? Yes, it did. During the course of your investigation, did you observe or learn anything that allowed you to form an opinion whether or not the food and beer being sold out of the back of the truck were being sold by VFW Post 10057 or by someone else? The truck was being sold by someone else. And what, what caused you to form that opinion? I asked the person that was selling it. Okay. Would you describe this person, please? Uh, black male, 34 years old. And what did the, uh, you say to this person and what did he say to you? I asked him if he had the permission of the VFW Post to be selling these items. And what did he say? He said that subject Al Young said it was okay for him to conduct his business there. Sorry, folks. Please. Please. Subject who? Al Young. Al Young? Yes, sir. All right. <clears throat> Mayor, uh, at this time I'd like to lodge with the clerk uh, uh, the photographs that I've caused to go up on the overhead. That's fine. Now, uh, as I understand it, these are, uh, these are, this particular event of November the 14th is not charged in the disciplinary complaint. No, not specifically. So this is basically uh, other acts uh, that you're trying to uh, introduce at this time? This would be covered by the allegation, the general allegation in the front of the, of the disciplinary complaint that... Uh, they, they've uh, violated the law and okay. operated their business. But, but nothing in the complaint would suggest that there was a violation on uh, November the 14th, 07, other than the generic uh, reference. That's correct. All right, fine. All right, uh, do you have any further questions of the witness? I do. All right. Officer, based on, well, let me ask this question. You've told us a few times that you've been there. Over the, the last two and a half years, 
Uh, how many times you say would, have you gone to VFW post 10,057? Probably over 10 times. Have you formed an opinion whether or not the existence of the city's liquor license at this location um, has a relationship with criminal behavior that you find in this area? Yes, it appears to be common in that area. You say the criminal behavior appears to be common in the area. It's not exactly what I asked you. I asked you if you had an opinion whether or not, in essence, the liquor license is a magnet uh, that draws the criminal behavior to VFW post 10,057. It seems a little, when um, we're responding to calls there, it appears that people are going there because they get uh, cheap drinks at that location, so they gather there, and it seems that management is not managing the parking lot or the establishment, allowing people to gather there that are not members or guests. Do you have an opinion whether or not there's anything that Al Young and the other employees that you have seen there could do to deal with the people who you've seen uh, drinking liquor there? If they enforce their uh, membership laws and making people sign in and enforce the parking lot, the problems won't exist as well. Have you ever seen that happen? No, I have not. Thank you. I have no further questions at this point. Bill? Uh, I'll ask you only w one question because I had not seen that uh, complaint on that truck that we had the deep fryer and so on in the back. Was that truck actually in the parking lot or out front? Mm -hmm. Out front on the sidewalk. It was out front. Was it? <laughs> well, that, that, please. Yeah. That's, uh, that is a fair answer I needed to uh, know that. So people that were uh, gathered around the truck uh, buying evidently the shrimp and whatever it was in there, did you actually ch check to see if they were actually members of the VFW Post or maybe others that were out and about in that area? The majority of the crowd were in the parking lot at the time, and uh, I didn't check to see if anyone was members. You didn't really check that part of it? Yeah. And um, the, uh, it, it would seem uh, if you can buy uh, cheap drinks because of liquor license and so on inside the club, that would be difficult for that truck to sell beer and so on outside, which would evident, probably cost them more than inside. Possibility, correct? Possibility. You, uh, the other question, uh, on the, uh, they showed all the uh, guns and things that were taken. Uh, you know if those guns were actually taken from people who were on the premises, in other words, in the parking lot or inside the FW? Do you know that answer? Yes, I do. What's the answer? The person that they were confiscated from was inside the parking lot, right in front of the FW doors. <laughs> The, in their in their parking lot, the guns were confiscated there. Yes, sir. Okay. I have no other questions. Thank may you. Ask, to may I ask one question? Certainly. Officer, directing your attention to the the truck with uh, the fried food and uh, the cooler with alcohol in it, did you observe any people who you knew to be VFW employees uh, uh, getting food or beer? One of the security officers. One of the security officers from VFW post 10,057 bought something from the people in the truck? Yes, sir. And what did he buy? That I don't know. Thank you. Did you speak with this person? Not at that time, I didn't. At a later time? Yes, I did, but not about that. All right, thank you. All right. Any other questions? I have no other questions. All right, does the council have any questions? Yes, sir. All right, Councilor Wilson. Uh, officer, in the two and a half years you've been familiar with this area, has there been a full-time security guard posted at the VSW location? Uh, for the most part, yes, sir. Okay. Uh, what are the general hours of operation? Let's say probably from about 3 to 4 o'clock to probably about 10 o'clock at night. 
it's three or four o'clock in the afternoon yes, so about ten o'clock at night and in your experience has there been a full-time security guard generally speaking on premises every time you've been there most likely they're inside but when I go to the, when I actually go for a call I make contact with the security officer and normally inside the building yes is it a, a uniform security officer I normally wear a yellow jacket that says security on the back is the security officer not doing his job? Is that what I'm hearing here? I mean, if we have problems and we have a security guard there, the security guard should be tending to these problems. So in your opinion, is that part of the issue here, that we have a security guard who's not doing his job? Yes, it is. He's not doing his job. And then Mr. Uh, Albert Young, whose name has been mentioned a couple times, how long, to your knowledge, has he been the canteen manager? Has he been the canteen manager during your two and a half years of Yes, he has. And in your opinion, is he not doing his job? I don't think he's doing his job either. Not managing the bar properly. Yes. Thank you. All right. Any other questions of the council? All right. Thank you. Yes, yes may I do? Oh, yes, uh, Council Barlow. What What are the hours in in regards to your shift? What is your shift? Right now, my work day shift right now from seven to about four or five. During the times that you uh, visited the. GSW post or gone on a call for service at this location, what were the hours in which you showed up there roughly? I would say probably from about 9 o'clock in the evening to about midnight. Okay. Thank you. All right. Any other questions? Uh, right, Mr. Mayor, could yes, I just sir. ask, and that means the selling of the alcohol by the truck was after 9 o'clock? I can get you a time of that. I don't know the time right now offhand. Yep, when you had the crowd of 20 or 30 people in the parking lot, I was just wondering if, if you could get to that time, I would appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Any other questions? Yes? Uh, I'd ask the officer and, and uh, our attorney, this is supposed to be a veteran's post, correct? You, in your honest opinion, you feel like this is being run as a veteran's post or as a tavern? At a tavern, sir. That's, thank you. Right. Any other questions? All right. Thank you, Officer. You're excused. Okay. Next witness, please. Sergeant Seifert. I do. Would you state your name, please, and spell your last name? First name William. Last name Seifert. S E I F E R T. You're a sergeant of Metropolitan Police? Yes, I am. <clears throat> Does your, and I see you in uniform, are you in the patrol bureau currently? Yes, I am. How long have you been in the patrol bureau? I've been in the patrol bureau my whole career, coming up on 11 years. How long is the sergeant? We're coming up on two years in April. Are you familiar with an establishment known as Veterans? of Foreign Wars VFW post number 10,057? Yes, sir. You have this familiarity from doing your job as a police officer? As a sergeant, correct. And does um, this establishment fall within your uh, patrol area of responsibility? Yes, it does. And how long has that been the case? Coming up on two years. During that uh, two years, how many times have you responded to, uh, to uh, calls or other or for other reasons gone there to do police business? It'd be hard to give you an exact number as I've dealt with this post on both days, swing and grave, but conservatively speaking, I'd say over 40 times. 40 times in the last two years? That's a minimum. <clears throat> and during many of these times have you gone inside? Yes, sir. <clears throat> when you've gone inside, have you found a key employee to be present? Not in, in my business inside. No, I have not. And when you've gone inside and asked to, to look at the... Have you gone inside and asked to look at a membership book? Not until recently. On the 10th, I was present for that. And that would be the photograph that went up on the overhead? That's correct. Let me, let me ask you the question, probably not as well put as the question asked uh, by Mayor Pro Tem Reese. 
based on your experience going to VFW post 10,057, is this establishment operated as a club or as a tavern? Definitely as a tavern. And when I use the, the term tavern, I meant open to the general public, anyone who comes in and pays their money for alcohol. That's correct. On your last visit there, the uh, assistant bar manager stated that directly. When was your last visit? On January 10th. And do you recall the name of the assistant bar manager? Uh, no, I do not, but if I could look at the report, it's in our uh, officer's report for that date. Excuse me, is this January 10th of 2008? Yes. That's correct. That. Once again, it's, uh, this is offered as yes. other events type uh, uh, proof. Uh, it's not alleged in the disciplinary complaint. What did the assistant bar manager say to you on that visit? I directly asked him. Um, I'm going to object to that as hearsay. Hearsay is permissible. Okay. I directly asked him if he would serve a patron that's just walking off the street. He said he would. I then asked him a follow-up question if he would check to see if they were members or guests. He told me it didn't matter. During these 40 some times at least that uh, you've been to VFW post 10,057, have you had occasion to look at the people behind the bar? You're talking to folks doing the survey? Yes. Yes, I have. <clears throat> and have you been able to form an opinion whether these folks are always employees? In my opinion, they're not employees. So is it the case that is it, is it, is it uh, that they're, your opinion they're not employees or you know they're not employees? My opinion. Not professional employees because we've asked for health cards, uh, cam cards, things like that, and they don't have those cards. Very well. You and I have met before about this matter, is that correct, a couple weeks ago? Yes, we have. And at that meeting I showed you the complaint for disciplinary action and asked you to read through it? Yes, you did. And directing your attention to page 6, beginning at line 19, um, did you read the allegations about calls for service? Yes, I did. Do you have an opinion whether or not during your two years that the calls for service at VFW post 10,050 57 have been excessive? In my opinion, extremely excessive. That's what brought our office, our community police office, to be looking at it and trying to work uh, to solve the problem. Do you have an opinion what there is about the W Post 10057 that results in so many calls for service to that location? Yes, I do. And what is that? Basically, what you have there is an open tavern, um, but they don't have to abide by the rules that most of our uh, regular taverns have to abide by. No TAN cards, security is very lax, uh, management doesn't enforce any of the rules that are there, including their own rules of the sign and book, um, a burden disregard. I have no further questions. All right, Mr. Bell. I have no further questions. All right, does the council have any questions of uh, the sergeant? Yes, sir. All right. Officer, you said something about your community policing, and, and I'm assuming you were talking about efforts that you've taken to try and work with this um, business. Can you describe those efforts? Can you describe uh, what the attitude has been back as far as uh, your efforts to try and get them to, to do the right thing? Yes, I sure can. Um, I have a community policing office. We typically approach a business obviously trying to work something out for the best of the community. In this case, about a year ago, we began that effort. Myself, I went in personally numerous times with the business card, trying to get a hold of the key employee to contact me regarding our concerns. Those calls were never returned. No attempt was made on their behalf. I also had officers work with me attempting the same thing. It was with that frustration that we approached Councilman Barlow's office and asked about possibly setting up a meeting to meet with the BFW post. But after showing the complete history of what's been taking place that we felt that it was best before the, for the council. Do you feel that you've made an appropriate amount of effort to reach out to this business to try and work with them towards them complying with the law, but they have not responded at all to your efforts? Would that be a fair characterization? Absolutely. Okay. Any other questions by the council? 
I sort of excuse. Thank you. Next witness. Officer Welty. I do. Would you state your name, please, and spell your last name for the city council? Um, Detective Jeff Welty, W-E-L-T-E. -E. You're a detective of Metropolitan Police? Yes, I am in the Special Investigation Section. How long have you been a police officer? Sixteen years. How long have you been with Special Investigation? Almost eight years. And has that been one tour the last eight years? Continuous, yes, sir. Do you have familiarity... Uh, during the last eight years with special investigations uh, with VFW Post 10,057? Yes, I do. <clears throat> and you likewise have familiarity uh, with a number of city licensees uh, that uh, hold uh, our various liquor licenses. Absolutely. Um, as of this time, we currently check, I would say, probably 100 enforcement checks per month on average. <clears throat> would it be accurate to say that out of those hundred that uh, there's a range, a continuum of, of businesses from no problem whatsoever to quite a few problems for Metro. Well, like any community, there are businesses that, that need more attention than others, and we, we run the gamut. We, we um, investigate and enforce privileged and regulated business, which runs, runs from uh, gaming, liquor, massage, things along those lines. I want you to focus on city liquor licensees. And, the, and consider um, amongst the ones you've been familiar with for eight years, uh, the range starting with, in your mind, no problem whatsoever for Metro to, at the other end of the range, the most problem for Metro. Where would you place the FW Post 10,057? It's definitely on the upper half of the problem businesses. <clears throat> Do you have an opinion why that is? From what I've seen, I, I, I've, I've had a long history with this business, over five years. Um, I've talked to the state commanders to try to put some em emphasis for the peers to, to talk to the management for them to do the right thing. And we just really haven't seen that. The, the management doesn't seem to care, or they just allow flat out allow illegal things to happen. Has it gotten better or worse or stayed the same over the last year or two? Um, it's consistently, I would say, gotten worse. I mean, in the past, there has been restrictions levied on the business, um, temporary band-aids, uh, they would do early closures, but then the things seem to just steamroll and, and go back in the same situation they were before. Thank you. I have no further questions. Well, I have no questions. All right. Does the council have any questions of Detective Welty? All right. Thank you, Detective. Here thank you for your time. This year? Yes, sir. I have no further witnesses. All right, very good. Um, so, your case. <clears throat> your Honor, before I call, I'm going to call uh, uh, several witnesses, and uh, one will be Mr. Albert Young, who has the uh, is in charge of the uh, VFW Hall to ask him some questions. I might just point out to the council that in the complaint, in and of itself, it alleged that um, the license permits sale and consumption of alcohol to bona fide members of the club on the premises only. That was in and of itself incorrect. They are allowed to have guests the same as Elks, Moose, and any of the other service clubs. So that is, is not true. They can have guests. It said that records indicate, and they discussed. Why don't you do this first, Mr. Bell? When you're making reference to the disciplinary complaint, would you refer to a specific now, page one? All right. Summary of allegations. Page one. Page one. All right, very it doesn't good. Doesn't have a one on it. So okay, I got it. You got it. So uh, they are allowed to have guests. I realize that has to be done properly. They discussed that some of the members were underage. There's no proof that anybody has been sold any liquor underage of any kind. And they allege that several times throughout their complaint. 
the officers have uh, uh, stated they have attempted to work with the officers of VFW Post number 10,057, as well as veterans of foreign wars, and might tell you that veterans of foreign wars meet there too, along with the ladies' auxiliaries, both the ladies' auxiliaries of veteran of foreign right, wars. Now, and I understand what you're saying. No. Are you going to have witnesses to this effect? Yes. Mm -hmm. All right, fine. Yes. Um, the other thing of interest, and I believe, now this, I mean, I can have a witness to this effect, but I believe the council knows it. There's a discussion of all these things that have happened starting back in 2005. There were, in 2005, they discussed seven different items. In 2006, one item, which involves the manager. Then they go to 2007, and they mention uh, three events that occur in 2007, which is page four, February 8th, March 2nd, and April uh, 30th. It's interesting that VFW appeared in front of this body and received their full liquor license back in May of 2007. So I don't know why there's a discussion of all these other items that occurred before because I believe they were before the council and were discussed. After that, in May, then there is a list of eight items that have occurred, uh, which we can uh, uh, we, we can answer. But I just wanted to point out that he gave him a full liquor license in the middle of May of 2007, and they've gone back on all these items that occurred long before. Not saying that some of the allegations weren't correct. But they still were, I believe, on a restricted license, given a full license in May, and then some eight more items plus a couple more I heard of today that I was not aware of. Now, one of the things I, again, would like to say is that we realize that you have to run and, and treat your liquor license properly, and there's rules and regulations you have to uh, stand by. But as far as VFW post 10,057 being a public nuisance, can't see how they've been a public nuisance. These, this is made up of members from the Second World War, Vietnam War, Korean War, some now from the Gulf War, and I guess a few from the uh, President. Right, and we War. said at the beginning, Mr. Bell, with all due respect, that um, uh, we. Uh, we celebrate and we value uh, right. the contribution that, that each one of those persons made. And basically, if you'd oh. be kind enough to call the witnesses. I'll call uh, Mr. Albert Young. All right, Mr. Young. Mr. Mayor? Yes. Before we have the witnesses called, if I could just ask a couple of questions. My understanding is that when we went from the uh, uh, to the full liquor license, that at that time we voiced concerns, but we granted the license on the belief and on the agreement by the, the veterans that they would put in certain uh, actions that would prevent uh, similar incidents occurring and that now we're talking about the incidents occurring and that's why we brought up the previous ones. Correct. And that that's what I just wanted to point out. I think that's the case. When you say that we were, they were granted the full license, it wasn't a quick granting. It was questioning as to what had occurred. And secondly, do we have proof of underage guests? You know, he mentioned that, and we have said underage guests many times, and I wondered if we had proof they were underage. Do you have records of that? or? There are records of that, I believe, and I can ask Mr. DeFiore to try to find them. Okay, so, so you do have the proof of the underage. I, I, I wondered about that. Thank you. I'm sorry, Ms. Mary. Well, at, at, this point, at this point in time, other than the... Um, uh, the complaint for disciplinary action alleging these things, there is no proof before us. That's correct. And have, I'll give Mr. DiPiori a few minutes to see if, if he can find it for me, and I'll let you know whether or not he has. Thank you. Mayor Goodman. Yes. 
For purposes of clarification, Councilwoman raises a good point, and that is if we granted a permanent license in May of 07 uh, with certain conditions or with certain admonitions, we should have those on the record right now. So when we granted this license in May of 07, were certain conditions put on the license? Do you want to ask that now, or you want to I guess we're I'm asking ahead. Mr. Henry Mr. to advise the council as to whether or not there were certain conditions put on the license. Where's my microphone? Mm -hmm. Mayor and Councilman Wilson, to answer your question, I have a copy I have a copy of the license which was um, issued on May 2nd 07 after the council had approved it for um, without further review and the conditions on it at that time were limited to two one was to assure staff maintains valid alcohol health and work cards and two closing times no later than 11.30 p.m. for services and 12 midnight for closing of the club altogether. Prior to that, we had conditions on the license dating back um, to March of uh, 07, March 16th of 07, and those conditions were to improve security for the outside of the club, not permitting alcohol use in the parking lot, improve lighting in the parking lot, Assure staff maintains valid alcohol health and work cards. Closing time no later than 9.30 p.m. for service and 10 p.m. for closing. And then subject to a 60-day review on May 2nd. Those were the conditions as of March 16, 2007. Thank you. And one of the questions I'm going to ask Mr. Henry to address is what specific of those uh, conditions are you saying have been violated? At some point, I'd like to have you address that, please. All right, so. uh, this is Mr. Albert Young, uh, just going to be sworn in. All right, Mr. Young. I do. Okay, I'm going to uh, discuss the items that were after the liquor license was granted in May of 2007. Therefore, I'm starting on page 5 with July 13th. Uh, Mr. Young, was Patricia Roberson cited for no alcohol awareness card and failure to have an employee list available upon request? Yes, she was. And what did you do about that? When I looked at it, it had that she had no alcohol awareness card, which in fact she did have one. What the problem was at that time, the officer who initiated the uh, citation, it was intended for one of the security guards outside. At that time, they decided he didn't need to have an uh, alcohol awareness card. Although he proceeded inside with the same citation and wrote Miss Patricia Rose up for not having one, which in fact she did have one. Uh, that's, that's good enough. Uh, July 19th, the police, the Las Vegas Country Palm Police Department <coughs> investigated a fight at VFW Post. At your VFW post, involving approximately 20 people, was that fight at your post? According to my record, the, the fight happened across the street. July 30th, you have a situation where the police came and they arrested people for sale of drugs. You saw the pictures and handguns in the uh, parking lot. What would be your uh, retort for that. Yeah. Several times on the officers I have come in contact with, which times I know stuff from Mr. Welsh, uh, I told him that at any time the arrest would come in, conduct an investigation, make arrest, and my staff would help them up to the point where they would be in harm's way. Other than that, 
take a challenge wherever they wanted to. And uh, the rest they made was, was a nice arrest. Congratulations. July 30th. They arrested people with semi-automatic uh, handguns. Were you aware of that? When were you aware of Were you there that date? No, I wasn't. You don't know who was. I don't know who was either. I never seen a report uh, of uh, any arrest made of that, of that type. September 2nd, a fight at the FW Post involving nine subjects, one under the influence of PCP. Did that take place on your grounds? It, it, it wasn't a fight. It was a guy having problems uh, with, with a drug reaction. And I, apparently we had some friends who were trying to subdue him uh, uh, to assist him. Did that take place in the parking lot? In the parking lot. Okay. Was he transported to the hospital? He was transported to the UMC, right. September 18th. They observed two subjects selling cocaine to people in the DFW parking lot. Are you aware of that? I, I was made aware, or was made aware of it. However, like I said, uh, we uh, extend our assistance to Mr. Department of Police Department to come on the grounds, conduct investigations, whatever they see fit. Uh, it On October 11th, there was a fight at BFW Hall that evidently took place inside between two women. Is that correct? It's correct. And and what happened to those women? They were, according to, to uh, our procedures, they were escorted out one by one off the property. And uh, apparently it may have returned. No one knows where the stabbing or cutting took place, you know. There was a crime scene, but I'd say no evidence of any crime being committed on the property. But they were escorted off the property one by one. November 2nd, uh, the city business licensing officers inspected BFW Post, their post, they determined that retail tobacco and coin operated licenses issued to you were not displayed. What's your answer for that? My answer for that is, firstly, I had never heard of a tobacco uh, coin operating machine uh, license. We did have a tobacco machine one time, but I'd never seen it. Do uh, you have it now? No, we don't have it now. There were two pools of it. Whatever the problem was, it was taken care of within 72 hours. Taken was back to the property of proper authorities and it's always uh, taken care. How long have you had those uh, pool tables in the uh, on the premises? Ten years. And uh, has anyone ever said anything to you before about needing to display the licenses for those? Never. So this was the first time. It was the first time. I call your attention to the last event I had, which was November seventh, where in. Uh, Two male subjects entered your post and uh, asked another individual to step outside. Is that correct? This is correct. And um, did that individual go outside with them? Yes, he did. And to your knowledge, was that individual... Did you find out later that that individual had been robbed, stripped naked, and made to walk home? Yeah, this was later. Uh, apparently, uh, the, the subject uh, knew his assailants. Uh, they were uh, sons of his girlfriend. And I think the initial thing was that uh, the two individuals were unhappy with the way the guy was treating his mother. And uh, for my information, they took him outside to sit him to humiliate him. I think it, at some point, it may have escalated into a robbery, uh, but uh, there were no guns ever. And were, and were you aware that they were going to take him outside and, and strip him? No. The old, that was the end of the complaint. Some of those are fairly serious complaints, uh, obviously, uh, Your Honor. Uh, 
uh, the being robbed, uh, that nobody seemed to know that that was going to happen. Obviously, the narcotics offenses. But in the complaint, they talk about numerous narcotics offenses. And I looked through that entire complaint. I found the two two times when narcotics were evidently sold in the parking lot. <coughs> that doesn't mean they should be, but uh, they were. That there was... Um, some fights, but none occurring actually right, inside. But, but that, that's more appropriate for your closing argument. Okay. Yes. Okay. okay uh, if, do you have any additional questions of the gentleman? Uh, he was. If you if we wanted to go back to the original, some of those original complaints, uh, this gentleman was cited for not having uh, his um, card for management of the uh, premises. He said that was true. He was not. He was uh, told to get one. He did go get one. He now he has one. Has had one from 2006 forward. 2006. He was cited for not having one. When in actuality he had already been approved for one. Just didn't happen to have it on him. I guess is that correct? Almost. I, I, I think this, this goes way back when we first started. We had we had meetings like this. And at the end of the meeting, I was asked, where is my car? He got up and say, Mr. Petullo, see that he gets his car. I never got it. Next time, I'll ask again. He said, you, you okay for your car? Where's my car? Mr. Petullo, where's my car? He'll get it. Never got it. Finally, one day, some young lady came by one night and said, we're going to ask you if I'm not having a car. I said, they never gave me one. Never. So I, I finally went down and got one. I didn't like coming down to see the hall because you guys don't like me down here. Oh, yeah, so, no, so I came down, he finally gave me one. I don't know where to hang up for me. I gave him a card. I, I think I proved the card the first day I walked in the door. But I never got it. Thank you. Yes, and you, you now have a card. Yeah, now I have one. Really? As, as of uh, November 16th, I finally got a card of this year. I just last year. I've discussed a number number of these matters with you. Is it true that uh, and Metro has uh, certainly used it as a complaint here that on several occasions, there's two or three occasions in here, you have not had a membership uh, list available for them? True or not true? This is this is true. And, and is it your intention to correct it so they, you now realize that you have to have a full membership list available to Metro, not only of your membership, but of the membership of the Ladies Auxiliary, the uh, membership of, uh, uh, you have another club that meets with the American, yeah, Legion. American Legion and their auxiliary. It, it's that's true. your understanding. You know you have to have that available. We, we, we have to have that. But it was true that you didn't have it available when Metro asked for it. Because uh, no one ever said that we had to have a membership list available. And this is the problem that I, that I don't understand. The membership list is kept in the quartermaster's office. It's not kept with the bar manager. And if we know we have to have one available, we could have one available. Mm -hmm. All we were aware of was the employee listing. There was also an allegation that, uh, and there were several allegations that, as to your guests, that when Metro walked in and saw your guest list, it was there under nicknames, didn't near cover the number of people that were in the place. Is that correct? That's correct. And is your understanding, and you know now that you must always have a full guest list available and who they're a guest of? It's good. And that, that if, when at all possible, that member is to be present if that is a guest of theirs. This is correct. You understand that? We understand it. Because uh, a lot of violations in here cover that guest list and the membership list. Well, Ron, let me interrupt you for one moment. There's no statutory uh, or regulatory requirement that such a list be kept, is there? No. no. Your Honor, that, that is, uh, I thought that was correct too, but in the... Uh, well, I know there's, a lot, there's been a lot to, uh, to do about not having a list and failing to comply with the list, but 
There's no statute or uh, 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 ordinance which that. requires the keeping of a list. And it just says that members or their bona fide guests are and the only ones who are allowed to uh, participate in the purchase of alcoholic beverages. And by keep, yeah, right. And the, even though there's no statutory duty, what VFW is willing to do is have those well, listeners. So when yeah, Metro checks them, they know. Yeah, that's who fine. I mean, you can do whatever you want to do. That's fine. But as far as the law is concerned, uh, there's no violation right. of law on that one. And the number, uh, that was a, a, a case with a number of these things which looked pretty bad as far as selling liquor to minors uh, and that type of thing. This truck uh, uh, by Metro Sonic. Well, once again, that's okay. more in the okay. nature of an argument. Right. Uh, are we through with uh, Mr. Young as a witness? I like that lift of truck. Anyway, well, well, your lawyer has to ask you the question. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't, I didn't Let's know. ask about the truck. Make it feel good. I didn't know. I wanted to like us. Okay. I didn't know about this truck yeah. until Mr. Henry brought it up and uh, Metro brought it up. So would you explain this truck out in front of your place selling uh, whatever? What well, I heard it was barbecue, but now it turns out no, shrimp. Shrimp, the shrimp and beer. And so this, this, this truck on our side is on our side of the uh, on the sidewalk. I have on occasion. When the patrol officer come by, say, so you guys are a nuisance to us. They are blocking our interest in the exit. I have told them that. Now, here's the key. I'm sticking my neck out. I did tell several patrolmen that the guy in the white truck was selling liquor. They were aware of this. And I don't know where I was back then. So I'm sorry. But I told them. I would step in on TV and say I didn't. I told him the guy in the white truck was selling liquor and probably some other stuff. We have cooperated with these guys. I don't know what's the problem. And these guys, I don't know them. But most of the patrols, when they roll up at night, I'm out there. I don't work 24-7. I work Friday through Sunday and Monday. And most of the patrols, when they come by, Mr. Young, you're doing a great job. But when you get downtown, it seems like the story is destroyed. Can I ask you another question? What are your hours of operation? Our, our operation is 2 to 11.30 on the weekends, straight down. And during the week, it's 12 to 10. And at no time, no time, can we been Operating past midnight, never, since I've been a bar manager, except during New Year's, when I did write a letter to the uh, commander, I was like, when this year last year, said we'd be open for traditional hours. All right, any other questions? I have no other questions. All right, any cross, -exa <laughs> cross examination? Please, Mayor. All right. Probably taking my life in my hands, but I'll try. Uh -huh. Go ahead. Mr. Young. Referring to the uh, white truck, what other stuff do you think they were selling out of it? Uh, barbecue, probably, and uh, and it was a malicious rule, which I think probably was true. I want to go into the whole detail, but uh, no, I just asked you a question. So alcohol and bar barbecue. So when you said probably other stuff, you were referring to al to uh, barbecue. Right. Now this guy never got okay for me okay, doing that. Now, stuff. have you seen this white truck more than once? Parked near your BFW post? Right. How many times? Probably three or four times. And would you tell us exactly where it was parked? Was it in your parking lot, uh, blocking your driveway on the street, or, or what? It was parked on the street. Near your BFW post? Yes, yes, sir. Okay, and you said you told the police that it was uh, blocking um, uh, the parking lot, or yeah, the entrance to your parking lot? I've the <clears throat> Now, did you observe uh, your customers or your members from the VFW post uh, going out there and buying stuff from the folks in that truck? I smell that place, no. Why do you think that truck keeps parking in front of your VFW post? It's public street, it's not, uh, I, I have an opinion on that. So you think it's just a chance? Let me clear that. There are a lot of vendors who park there. They can people selling hamburgers, hot dogs, hot tomatoes. This is a tradition on that side of town there. A tradition that vendors park near your VFW? Yes. Uh-huh. 
Let me direct your attention to uh, page 4 of the disciplinary complaint, line 27. And that recites an incident on April 30th, 2007, when a city business licensing officer went to your BFW post. And this officer uh, uh, spoke uh, with you and asked you to produce a current members list. Do you recall that? Turn the page, or I'll turn the page for you. Yes, I do. And uh, the officer uh, stated that uh, he produced, that you produced a membership list with 82 names on it. Is that correct? This is correct. Let me turn your attention back to page 6 of uh, the disciplinary complaint. Starting at line 7, this is the incident that you, uh, Mr. Bell asked you about uh, where a man was taken out of your VFW post and robbed and compelled to strip naked by a couple of other men. Do you recall testifying about that? Yes, I do. And I think you told us you weren't there, so no, no. you found out what happened from, uh, uh, what, talking to your bar manager? I talked to the uh, victim himself. Did you talk with... Uh, your bar manager, Robert Bobby Whittle? Yes, I did. <clears throat> and did uh, Mr. Whittle tell you that uh, he had spoken with the police about this matter and told the police, I'm reading now starting at line 14, that boy got what he deserved. I would have done him worse if it were me. If I call the cops, it makes it look like I got problems here. I don't need everybody coming down on me because of the stuff that goes on here. If it gets settled here, that's the end of it. Now what's the question? Did uh, your bar manager tell you that he uh, told that to the police? No, he didn't. Thank you. I have no further questions. All right, I'll leave you One question. Would you agree with that statement by your bar manager? No, I wouldn't. You realize you can't take the law into your own hands. I realize that. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, I would just like to ask Mr. Young, do you feel like you run this post as a veteran's of foreign war post, or do you feel like you run it as a tavern? As a veteran's of foreign war post. Uh, you don't have, you don't allow people to just come in there off the streets and buy alcohol and you, you, you're you sure that everybody gets asked, are you a member, or do you have a, 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 a okay of a, from a member saying it's okay to come in here, or? Okay. Most of the people who, who pay for the VFW, most of them are coming there. I'm not asking most of them. I'm asking, do you feel like you, if somebody came in there off the street and wanted to buy a, a, a Bud Light, would you sell it to them? If I didn't know them, no. Thank you. All right. Did you have any questions of Mr. Young? I don't have any further All right, questions. Fine. Does, uh, Councilor Wilson? Uh, Mr. Young, the thing that concerns me the most right now okay. is that this detective stood up here and stated that through his community uh, policing, what was the word? Community oriented policing efforts, right. that he's reached out to your business and probably you in particular, right. and you have not responded. Now, you've been the, the bar manager there for how long? I talked for two years. Two, you said? Go ahead. Okay, so during this two years, have you learned that their community-oriented policing efforts has been made, that, that somebody's left a card or reached out to you to get together, to talk, excuse me, to get together to sit down and say, listen, we're having some problems here. You know, what can we do to make it work? Has that happened? This is a good question. I'm going to ask you a good question. I have several cars taped on my, my boss's door. A lot of these guys I call never return my call. Never. There are some guys I talk to, there are several guys I know that I talk to, and we discuss it. What do you mean, guys? You talking about police officers? Police officers, yes. Well, what about this detective? Uh, your last name? Welty. Welty. Have you ever heard that Detective Welty has reached out to you and, and, and left his card or whatever? I, I think I've talked to him on a couple of cases there. There, there, there's one, uh, there's a couple of police uh, that left messages for me to call them, 
he wanted to talk to me about it. When I called him, he never returned my call. My number, I did him off of my cell number, and I'm available 24-7. It's the strange that the city, the city uh, license can get over to me with the ladies, uh, Ms. Kelly and the rest of them, they try to reach me. But I called every police officer never returned my call. It's like, it seemed like it was a one-way deal. Now, I will sit down and work with them any time, 24 7 if you want to talk, but it's got to be two ways, not one way. Is somebody at the door checking people in when they come in to visit your, your business? Yes, we do, sir. We have one coming in, so yes. And do they, do they say, are you a member? Can I, is there a membership card? You certainly, the gentlemen and, and ladies that wear VFW uh, clothing, you know, it's obvious, but is there somebody that checks when people come in? That's why the door they come, they, they sign, like, say, some people do sign first name sometimes, some sign the uh, last name, but there is, un uh, the city does not make any stipulations of that. So we make our own rules. Our rules are, you come in, you sign the law, but if you guys want us to bow down to the will, but no, that's no set rule on signing in the ID card. That's the age is questionable. I have a question. Wait, let, let me ask you, uh, do the council members have any additional questions? I do. All right. Mr. Young, um, it was made mention that um, officers have, had come into your location and not seen, for example, um, your members wearing hats. Is it, let, let me ask you this question, is it um, a part of your rule for members to wear hats or insignia to basically state who they are? No. Okay, so I just wanted to just just clear the air of that. It's, 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 it's no, it's the rule. Um, but secondly, as, as far as the issues that have come up over the years in regards to your location, what time of the day traditionally do these Incidents continue to occur. You mean uh, the bad incidents? Like let, let me be more specific. Mm -hmm. The allegations that have been brought forward here today that you are aware of, what time of the day, what hour of the day, time frame, has these incidents occurred? It's at night, probably. It's at night, but I. I haven't witnessed any of this when I was on duty, none. Well, I'm not saying you per se as right. far as witnessing it, but as far as whether it was brought to your attention, I'm just asking what time frame of the day have these issues occurred, being that we have documentation that incidents have taken place, and being that you're the key employee, I'm pretty sure that you have, as it states in the record, that you are aware of these events that have taken place. I just want to know what time of the day are you aware of of it continuing to take place. Is it in the morning? Is it in the afternoon? Is it at night? It's at night. Okay. No further questions. All right, fine. Uh, Mr. Bell, did you have a question? Yeah, I, I have a uh, couple of questions. Um, as to uh, the um, membership list, uh, there's not a requirement, as you stated, to wear a hat or a coat, uh, particularly there. Is there somebody always there who is aware of who the members are and who the members aren't? Yes, there is. And who might those be besides yourself? Normally, I was of, uh, from five on as a person signed to the door. Knows who everyone is coming to the door there. They haven't signed it. They know who all your membership is. Right. And how many members do you have? We have... Uh, 139. 139 members. I don't have any further questions. All right, Mr. Young, I have a question or two of you. Um, what would you suggest could be done in order to make sure that the illegal activities that everybody agrees upon took place on the parking lot don't take place in the future on that parking lot? 
Mr. Goodman. Yes, sir. <coughs> Your Honorable Mayor, can I speak to that? I, I spoke in no, I'd like to hear from Mr. Young. Okay. Please. Very well. Okay. We would um, increase security and uh, we, we would uh, have a, uh, the signing of this, uh, which is probably had it more on, on a, on, on, on a matter that, uh, we, we, ID matter, rather. Wait, wait, please, okay. please, I'm going to ask you, Mr. Young. Okay. Now, the, the, the cooperate with, with Metro, what we, we're going to do that. If there's a problem, we will call. The last time we call, it's it, it, it held against us. And, and we'll call it anyway. Okay, because you, you, they do keep a record, as you know. You've right. heard that, uh, of calls from the particular location, both inside uh, the Veterans Post as well as on the outdoor phone. And uh, those... Uh, uh, phone calls are recorded, and as you say, they could at some point in time uh, be used uh, to indicate that there's activity of a unseemly nature taking place there, but you uh, are committing at this point in time, and you're under oath, that you would put a procedure into place that, in fact, if there was a problem there, notwithstanding the consequences, you would call it in. Right. No, I, to carry this little thing, I think, you uh, know, when I'm on duty, in who I am, because I, I, I'm usually wearing some type of DFW attire, so is my assistant manager. And as far as these guys here, I want you to take a good look at me. I don't see you these guys. None of them. So if you're sneaking around writing, wait, 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 wait. I'm, I'm asking you what you're going to do uh, in order to rectify the problems in the parking lot. So you said you're going to have additional security. This is security. And we're, we're gonna, uh, what would happen, uh, let me ask you hypothetically, what would happen if that um, that truck came into your parking lot uh, instead of being parked outside on the street? What would you plan to do about that? I would call Metro. I would call. First, I would ask them to leave. If they would leave, they would call Metro. All right, well... Um, from what I heard about the truck, the truck really, I guess the worst thing the truck did, the guy who had the truck, was to sell a couple beers. But um, uh, you, you uh, understand that that is uh, uh, probably uh, against, uh, against the law if he's selling beers out there without having a license to do that. But this, this is uh, the problem that we have. If this had not so the guys outside... The parking lot, whether it's having barbecue, whatever they're saying. Sometimes they go out and talk to them, sometimes they don't. Sometimes they say that's out of their area. Because they, they don't have the uh, license from the county uh, health department. But if they're outside the fence, that doesn't cover us. Okay. They're going to have to move. Mayor? Okay, yes, uh, Council uh, Barlow. I have a question for Mr. Young. Mr. Young, can you please speak on the credentials of your security personnel, please, and how many security personnel you have on site? Yes, yeah, please. And and what credentials do they have to be security officers? Do they carry guns, or w what makes them security according to your rules and regulations at the DSW post? According to my rules and regulations, of course, it was after it. My initial rules were they all have to have sheriff cards and work. So when I sit them down to have a sheriff card, if they're working in the city, they don't even have one. And it was unclear, I don't know if you guys ever made up your mind on it, whether I have to have a license, uh, tap on the weather's card or not, but I'm not going to have it anyway. But the uh, city doesn't require them to have a sheriff card. Okay. So, so you're saying that your security guard, according to your rules, only have a sheriff card? Don't have a sheriff card. They have, they, they have them now, but when they expire, they can't get them again now. So, is it that you just hire someone and just call them security, or what background do they have to serve as security? Okay. Both my security guards are security guards. The, the one we have, the, the one that they have a full uh, certified, he works for another company to come and work for us too. So we have two that work for us. Now, let me clear this. The one that works for us now has full credentials. So if I want to get a new security guard, the uh, lecturer will not give him a sheriff card. 
when you say full credentials, of, are, are they? Do they carry weapons? Uh, well, oh, well, one arm. We're talking under- only one armed security. Only one armed security. Right. And that's the one who who has the uh, who works with the other company. Right. Okay. That's the one arm. Okay. Right. Mr. Mayor. Yes, Mr. Council. Um, when you say you have three on site, is that uh, not at the same time or all at the same time? Do you have three? We have uh, we have one two week and uh, three on site during the weekend on the weekend. So you have three on site on the weekend right. and one on site uh, during the whole time you're open um, during the uh, weekdays. Right. Okay. And I think uh, going along with what Councilman um, Barlow said, uh, I would be interested in the specific training because I think this came up before and it was related to problems in a similar area with the store. And at that time, the questions came out about how well trained the individuals were. Because if you look at the record, if you go for the last eight months, uh, in the material that you sent, uh, Mr. Bell, that you said that um, both the city of Las Vegas and, Las, and the Metro stated we were complying and were doing a good job, or I should say came from the petitioner, uh, and then you received the unrestricted license. And I remember quite clearly, we didn't say you were doing a good job. We were saying that you could make improvements and work together, and then that's when conditions were discussed and everything. But since that time, which is only eight months, as I counted, you've had uh, three or four times where the managerial responsibility as to lift and everything wasn't done correctly. And I don't know if that's... Uh, by law or not by law, but the thing that concerns me, you've had three fights, two drug times, two times drugs, you've had weapons twice, once a couple of guns and another time the box cutter where the woman was uh, slid in the stomach, and then you had a robbery. Quite honestly, that's an awful lot for eight months. Are you, are you so I'm not me? saying, no, I, I, I'm talking to you, yes, okay. um, and I'm not saying that you wanted this to happen. Yeah. I'm now, obviously, you wouldn't want it to right. happen, and I greatly respect the ASW, right. and I I know how it's good to have your associations, but something isn't quite right, and you could be considered a chronic nuisance because in eight months, these are some rather serious incidences, not counting what happened before. And so that means you must have, I would say, a well-managed uh, program which there's some questions about right now, and you also must have well-trained security people to be able to take care of this. And I don't see the well-trained security people, and that's what I'm trying to find out. The security guard that we have, that we have on duty, uh, they, are, they are trained security guards. But you know, what kind of training? I mean, did they go through a special training? Could you give us information as to what type of training they had? We know that there are some places that say they train guards, and I've learned this since I've been on the council, and they don't really train very much. We know of places you have to have certification or certain courses you take and certain experiences you need to have, and I just think at your place you'd want to have the highest level you possibly could have, not only for your protection, but the people who live there, there, and your reputation. There's a clear that that to that, that we are for staff are highly trained security guards. They come from other places and they're, they came highly recommended. I, I didn't check their credentials. Now, you must realize that we are in a high crime area, very high crime area, and crime will be committed. All we can do is, is take care of it and take the necessary steps to correct it. We well, can't stop the crime. Well, I would be interested in knowing specifically the training of the uh, security guards that you have. I just, I, I myself could not accept just saying they're well trained and uh, they were recommended. I'd like to know specifically what that was. And you're very right. It, it is high crime uh, around there, and it is something you have to watch. But that's even more reason why. Have you ever considered not having an outdoor phone, by the way? I know we had trouble at some of the 7-Elevens in our area, and Metro told us their first recommendation uh, to uh, try and lower the drug situation was to remove the outside phones, and it helped. That's, that's a good question. The one we had ourselves out there, it has been removed. Oh, so that, that one's gone. Now. That's gone. That's one on the fence. Right on the property. I don't know how it's it doesn't belong to us. It belongs to a private uh, 
for the company. I don't hear those. They have to have permission to put it there, though. If it's your property. Please, folks. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm just asking. Do they need special permission, or could you look into that? I can look into it. And uh, if so, we'll, we'll try to get it removed. We'll, we'll work on that. Uh, I'm just, uh, I'm sure that Metro, and when you do this community policing, the closest of the community residents with Metro is so key, and discussing with them that they feel you should keep that, uh, the, the one remaining phone out there. I just know in my area, which sometimes has high crime also, uh, that this was the recommendation they gave us. Right. And again, I don't think you can negate in any way the importance of having highly trained security guards right. where you're located, and you are a magnet, and you, but that's right. okay if you handle it right. All right. Thank you. Mr. Young, would there be any type of prohibition against your members wearing their cover at all times while they're in the, uh, uh, the, um, the hall? No, in fact, I, I had um, suggested a couple of times that if we did, they got the hat on. Because to me, I think when you wear that hat, you have a certain degree of pride right. and dignity, and you're going to, by just virtue of wearing the hat, make sure that everything is being done properly to the best of your ability, because you're carrying one of the traditions uh, of uh, the veterans uh, uh, for which your organization uh, purportedly stands. So. That may be something you want to consider, assuming that um, uh, you're in business. Right. All right. All right. Uh, call your next witness, Mr. Bell. And that's uh, the only witness I have. All right. Mm -hmm. Do you have any rebuttal? No, you aren't. All right. Then uh, the matter rests. Uh, both sides rest. Uh, do you have any uh, closing argument that you'd like to make? It's your burden, Mr. Henry. I do, Your Honor. All right. Mr. Young, you could have a seat, sir. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> I'd like to direct the council's attention to page two of the disciplinary complaint where there is set forth Las Vegas Municipal Code 6.5. Mr. Henry, uh, I'm sorry, would you speak into the microphone, please? Thank you. I would like to uh, direct the council's attention to page two of the disciplinary complaint where there is set forth Las Vegas Municipal Code 6.50.010, which is entitled regulatory powers declared liquor control and it relevantly provides the regulations contained in this chapter involve to the highest degree the economic social physical and moral well-being of the residents and taxpayers of the city and it goes on to provide nothing in this chapter shall be construed to confer any legitimate claim of entitlement to any benefit which might otherwise devolve upon any licensee or any person approved for suitability. I'd like to point out that this is a special liquor license that we give out to people who have a club and it is restricted to members of the club, bona fide members of the club and their bona fide guests. I would submit to you the totality of the evidence in this case is that this isn't being run by as a club. It never has been run as a club. They've taken this special restricted liquor license and used it to app operate a tavern. But they're not even operating the tavern legal legally. Officers have told you that when they go in there, anybody can be serving liquor. So this is this is sort of operated kind of like folks who have no understanding or respect uh, for the law or for the privileged license um, <clears throat> that they have. I was struck by uh, two statements made uh, during the recent conversation between Councilwoman Tarkanian and uh, Albert Young. Albert Young said we are in a very high crime area. And Councilwoman Tarkinian later on said, there's no doubt that this is a magnet. And I think this is the essence of the situation here. The existence of this liquor license 
the ability to putatively legally sell liquor has created a magnet for violent narcotics traffickers to congregate in an area of very high crime. It does not matter whether fault attaches to any of this. This is a liquor license and it is the obligation of the municipality I would submit not only to uh, look at its applicants and the location where the liquor is to be sold and form an opinion whether or not this is a suitable location based on everything that is known as well as whether or not the applicant is of good character but it is the obligation of the municipality to constantly uh, observe what's going on because cities change, people change. Areas that were once a suitable area to sell liquor become areas that are no longer suitable. Just as we know that areas where perhaps previous councils thought uh, that it was unsuitable to sell liquor, as time goes on, the city grows, the nature of the neighborhood changes, sometimes these areas become suitable. I would submit to you that this restricted liquor license meant only for club members and bona fide guests of club members is a magnet for criminal activity including violent crimes and narcotics trafficking and that it is unsuitable because of where it is which, in the words of Mr. Young, is a very high crime area. Now, I suspect that Mr. Bell, if he addresses what I just said, is going to say to you, they've had a license for 40 years. That's true. He's going to say to you, it's not they, their fault. On balance, they've done the best they can. I, and I would submit to you, that does not matter. When I was preparing for this case, I thought of a case that was reviewed by the Nevada Supreme Court in 1992, and it's the case of Teague, T-I-G-H-E, against Von Gorken, V-O-N-G-O-E-R-K-E-N. -E it's reported at 108 Nevada 440, and it refers, of course, to a former clerk of the city, Kathy Teague, and so it's a city of Las Vegas case. And in that case, <coughs> um, Mr. Van Gorken's predecessor had applied for building permits and all the other permits he needed to build a commercial structure to be operated as a bar. Mr. Van Gorken uh, then bought the land and the uh, structure under construction and applied for a liquor license. During the hearing on the application, um, the councilman for the ward at the time said, I am familiar with this area. It's almost entirely residential. It's building up to be more intensively residential. And despite the fact that they have the right building permit and despite the fact that they have the commercial zoning, they ought not get a liquor license. Not Mr. Von Gorken's fault, just the area that they're in is not appropriate. Mr. Von Gorken took the matter to court and ultimately it went to the Supreme Court. And the court uh, wrote relevantly, although the land upon which Von Gorken intended to construct a tavern was zoned to accommodate such a commercial enterprise, it is clear that compatible zoning does not, if so facto, divest a municipal government of the right to deny certain uses based upon consideration of public interest. And the court went on to write, the council had before it irrefutable evidence of the nature of the neighborhood into which Von Gorken wished to introduce a tavern. I would submit to you that you have irrefutable evidence, the totality of the evidence I presented and the testimony of Mr. Young as to the nature of this neighborhood. 
in the words of Mr. Young, a very high crime area. And I would submit to you that a liquor license is not any longer appropriate there because it is a magnet for crime. And I would conclude by saying that that is illustrated uh, by um, the incidents set forth in the complaint testified to by Mr. DiFiore and by the testimony of uh, the police officers. And for that, for that reason, directing your attention back again to page two of the complaint and the declaration of regulatory powers under liquor control, um, I would ask you to take into consideration to the highest degree the economic, social, physical, and moral well-being of the residents and taxpayers of the city and revoke this license. Thank you very much. Now, uh, Mr. Bell, when you make your remarks, uh, at least for my edification, please um, uh, not only address what you were going to address, but also how uh, you um, uh, would propose uh, this um, uh, post uh, should remain uh, open and have the ability to uh, uh, sell uh, alcoholic beverages uh, and um, uh, give uh, this council uh, the peace of mind that um, uh, illegal activities will not take place as a result of uh, the liquor license uh, being held intact. Well, Mr. Mayor and members of the council, he said, uh, Mr. Henry said, this has been open for over 40 years. It had a liquor license. The liquor license applies to both the uh, members as well as their guests. Uh, in recent years, it is obvious that the area has changed, and uh, though I don't necessarily agree that the case that Mr. Henry cited is totally on point, it certainly does have uh, some merit. But, having said that, the VFW represents just what it says, veterans of foreign wars. These are people who put in their service to this country. They need a place to gather and to be together. It's not to be a place of crime. Nobody has accused the VFW that I know of of having criminals as their members, nor particularly accused the guests of being criminals. There have been violations, which I have discussed with them thoroughly, that are not to be tolerated. Like you said, they, they don't need to keep a guest list. They don't have to keep a membership list. They're willing to. They've agreed to keep a membership list available for the police anytime they want to see it and to have guests check in, to have someone at the door to check them in. They have, they've told you what their hours are, uh, which I believe is within keeping. And they're going to put security in the parking lot. That has been one of the problems. That yes, they had security, but the security was inside. Therefore, doesn't see what's going on outside. There's been a discussion, although I understand, but and I, I heard that just before I got in here, there's cameras in and around the area. If there aren't, evidently Metro had said there were some cameras, but if there aren't, they'll put cameras up in that parking lot and inside. They know that this is privileged, and they know that this type of activity cannot continue. It is quite obvious you can't allow drugs and guns and so on to be in your parking lot. However, having said that, that parking lot is a fenced parking lot, there's two gates. The back gate is locked at all times. The front gate is required to be open, and as I understand, it's required by the Metropolitan Police Department. If Metro would like that closed, that could be closed and locked at night too. I have not talked to Metro, and I uh, and in saying these things, I know that Metro is stretched uh, to its fullest, and I uh, happen to put up in these areas. But there's other. Uh, things in that area of bars and stuff that certainly uh, uh, they sell alcohol and contribute to this. It is true you cannot allow people walk in off the street 
to buy liquor. And they have absolutely agreed that they will not allow that. They need a place to be, a place to gather, uh, and uh, both not only for themselves, but for the American Legion uh, and for their ladies' auxiliaries. They get licenses a couple of times a year to have barbecue in the parking lot. Uh, and I, w I was talking to Councilman Barlow the other day, and one of the things, and they would not be opposed to this, if the city knew of a better location in a better area, and their location could, of course, be sold to pay for that, they'd be more than happy to go to a, a different area. They don't like that area any better than uh, a number of the people here like that area. That type of thing is going on. It's dangerous. you got the security guards outside to report to Metro, and when they see something, they're going to have to report it. Uh, they'll need Metro's help, otherwise you end up with security guard getting shot or end up shooting someone. That can happen any place, but that is certainly a consideration. So they have agreed to guarantee to watch what is going on in there, to have their people pay attention to who comes in. No one but guests of the members and or their members. They are aware of who their members are. They'll keep the list up. They'll hire the uh, security. And I uh, didn't really talk to Mr. Young about it, but after Councilman Tarkanian talked about it, I would uh, get together with them and find out who their security are, who licenses them, and what kind of an outfit it is to make sure that the three security guards that they have on premises are the proper type of people. In other words, just not somebody that's coming over and saying, gee, I'll be a security guard. No, that doesn't work very well. In fact, that can cause uh, more problems. So I submit to you that their license shouldn't be pulled, that they are really not a nuisance. The events all discussed, uh, there was one in 2006. Maybe one is too many. And there were seven in 2005, and they finally ended up with eight in 2008, uh, I mean 2007. Um, but most of them were not having those CAM cards and those work cards, et cetera. I talked to them. They have guaranteed that if a person's in there working, bartenders, cocktail waitresses, whatever, serving, they better have their CAM card and their uh, and their regular work card, at tan card and work card, available on them or they're going to find themselves fired. They must carry it on them, not say it's out in my car, I forgot it and left it at home, so that if a police officer asks, that person can produce it. And nobody is to be selling any alcohol to anybody unless they have such uh, cars. And just... Uh, on their behalf, as uh, veterans, uh, I would ask that the liquor license continue. They will uh, have stated to me, and they will follow up on it. Mr. Albert Young will, that Metro is welcome when they have their meetings at any time. They'll be more than happy to work with Metro. And that should be done, obviously. And I will try to follow up on it myself personally to see to it that it's done. Uh, see to it who they're dealing with at Metro so I can talk to that individual. Make sure that Metro is pleased with what they're doing. I'll follow up on the security and uh, if you want cameras out in the parking lot, they can put them up or if Metro thinks that's a good idea and inside. And that's all we can offer. It's a veterans club. I, I'm sorry that Metro has the feeling that it's been operated as just a tavern. I don't think it really has, but certainly there have been some instances and things there that would indicate that there's been some lack, uh, lackadaisicalness about watching what's going on in there. I believe I can assure this body that that won't happen again. And I can assure this body that I'm here to help them any way I can, work with Metro any way I can, and if it isn't complied with, I won't be appearing in front of you ever again on this particular subject. Uh, Mr. Bell, I can certainly uh, respect your comments. Uh, I do have concerns about you promising for them that they're going to have uh, a register where 
the members can sign in and the uh, guests can sign in. Who's going to enforce that? We don't have we don't have enough uh, employees at the city of Las Vegas. We don't have enough money. Metro don't have enough uh, uh, money. So uh, who, who's going to say that they're, they're doing this? They are going to do it themselves. When Metro walks in there, there there has to be a log at the door. And, and what's going to happen if they don't? If they, if they, if they, go, if they walk in there and there's uh, two people, five people, three people in there that uh, aren't on the book, haven't signed, what's going to happen? They're going to come in and give us your license? Then I would say that uh, there'll be a complaint that I would get. Might be a complaint. Well, it might might not not the we should do it even though it's not legally required. Right. It might be a condition that if, if uh, Captain Ball so desires, though. And my thing is, I don't want to sit up here again and go through this one more time, two more times, whatever. And what we are, you're, you're saying they're going to do this. And my thing is, I, I found over the years since I've been here, is it's one thing to enact a law, it's one thing to say something, but something else altogether different to enforce it. Well, put it this way. <laughs> All I can tell you is, uh, and what you're saying is I understand very well, but I will work with them and, and try to help myself personally see to it that these things are followed through as they have told me they will follow through with. Now, well, I, 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 excuse me again. I, you know, I, I, I see such a thing called intimidation. You know, you have security officers over there. You have uh, a lot of young people out there having their parties or whatever, and uh, they, they tell the security guard to go back inside, mind their business or whatever. Uh, you know, and by the time Metro gets there, or whatever, it, it's just it is. It, it's it's an endangerment, and what that is is bringing this all about is the alcohol and the drugs. Now, without the alcohol, without the alcohol and drugs, we would be a problem over there. That's that. Oh, that's, that's, that's just that's just alcohol. We're talking about. They're not selling drugs. In well, no, no, uh, we, we have we have instances in, in my back up here though where drugs of. Uh, I, I see a picture of. Uh, they were sold in the in the parking lot. That's, that's where the, that is where the security guard comes in, and and the only thing a security guard can do is call Metro and run them off. I mean, they could sell drugs in somebody's front yard. What are you going to do? All you're going to do is pick up the phone and call. Well, I, I've 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 seen uh, instances down on Bonanza and Eastern, uh, where I've been there for many years, where uh, we have. Uh, drug sales going on out in the park in, in front of my business as well as Kitty Corner, uh, you know, and I have found over the years that uh, a lot of the drug dealers and or uh, the suppliers are the security themselves. Well, but that's that's not been an issue here with these people. I, no, I'm they're, not they're, telling you that that hasn't happened. Of course it has. But I mean, if you've seen that, even at your place, uh, this happens to be a privileged license, so it takes it into a, a different realm. But how would it be to say, well, uh, drugs are going and being sold in this area and you close your barber shop? That wouldn't be fair. These people need, need uh, you know, these people need a place to be together. They they've earned that right and and. Uh, they have not, I realize, by being veterans, earned the right to necessarily have a liquor license. We're asking to give them a chance to get this straightened out, get their security in place. And can I tell you, it's not going to be a number of calls to the police. I cannot tell you that because they've been asked to call the police when they see a problem. Well, I, I agree. I and mean, again, I want them to have a place. I, I do. But I want, I want everyone in members to go there to feel safe. Just like a uh, uh, customer comes into my barbershop. I want them to feel safe and comfortable when they come there. And that's what I sit up here for. That's what I want to do. And I'm, all I'm asking is we, we enact these different uh, rules and regulations, and it's the enforcement issues that I have problems with. And I want every woman out there to know that I, I do support. I want, I want them to feel safe. And that's all I'm asking is I, 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 want, I, want, I want to make sure that uh, uh, they get... Okay, uh, home safely. Uh, they get there, they have a good time while they're there, and when they walk out to get in their cars, they can feel safe. And, and that certainly is 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 very very fair and 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 the way it should be. And, and I might again present to the council. Uh, I don't know the 
area that well that different council members, mainly Councilman Barlow does, we could find another place in a, little, a better area around there that we could trade. I mean, they don't have all the money in the world okay. to be do it. They'd like to. Thank you. All right, I'm ready to go forward. Uh, I'm going to make a finding that the city has met uh, its burden of proof based on the fact that this is a privileged license. Now turning to Councilman Barlow and ask for your recommendation, Councilman. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I'd just would like to speak on a few items, if you will. Um, having been a, been a part of this community all of my life, um, I know um, the ups and downs that the post has gone through. Um, I used to frequent the post myself um, as a young man as well. Um, just so that we separate the two, I could talk all day about how my father was drafted serving in Vietnam all the way to my oldest brother serving in Desert Storm and all of the great things that you men and women have done to um, provide the freedoms that we here in this city, this state, and this country witness today. So I, w I want us to make sure that we separate the two in regards to this isn't an attack on the VFW because you all have done some great things not only in the state but in this world. There's issues that we all know and that you all know have been taking place in and around the VFW Post, and I'm not here uh, in this seat to basically turn the right cheek. I'm here to assist the Post and basically with the operations and the management as well as to get rid of the crime in the area by working with law enforcement, by working with the men and women of this community as well as your organization. So I wanted to just basically establish that right off the jump. Um, we talked, we, we've talked about increase of security. Um, Mr. Mr. Young, um, I'm looking forward to working with you as well as your members because I believe that there's a major issue as it relates to management of the post as well as security. I've met with you all in my conference room and a few of you even stated that you were afraid yourself to go out and address um, the young men in the parking lot. And let's just be honest here, we know, we know what's happening at the Post, but I don't want that to be the uh, dark cloud that the Post continues to have over its head. I want you all to be able to operate in a safe environment that we all can continue to be proud of and go and frequent on a daily basis. I'm going to assist you to uh, get rid of that negative element. However, at the same time, I need you all to assist me. Just as I look across this audience and I see many of you who are here today to support the, the doors remaining open, it's going to take all of us collectively to make sure that we push that negative element out of your parking lot as well. So just as you sit here today supporting the polls, you all know if we got together, as many as people we see here today, and stood out in that parking lot, that negative element wouldn't be there today and you all wouldn't be before this council. And that's just keeping it real. So if we can commit to each other in regards to making sure that that happens, some things, some, some positive things can take place in this community. You all elected me to basically stand up and protect this community and this is a part of my job. This is what you all have assigned me to do. And sometimes it's not easy and sometimes it's not popular. But my job right here today is to make sure that I stand up on, on your behalf, on our behalf of residents of Ward 5, because I too want that negative element to go away when we talk about West Las Vegas. West Las Vegas has many people, many families that have been born and raised and died in that community. A lot of people, blood, sweat, and tears for the sake of turning this community around. And if we don't stand up now, then who will? And I don't sit in this seat passively. I sit in this seat compassionately about the entire War 5. I was born in this community. So, the, you know, the things that we want to, don't want to talk about, well, it's being talked about now because it needs to be addressed and someone has to bring it out. And today we've brought it out. So with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to need your help. You all are going to have to help yourself in regards to making sure that the negative activity that has been taking place at this post has to go away. I have re residents across the street 
that would have been here today, but they were in fear of their life to come and stand before live television and, and talk about the Pope. You have members right here in the audience that wouldn't dare come stand before this this podium and be seen because you don't want your face to be seen in regards to retaliation. And I understand that and I respect that. Okay? So, so I'm not here to, to, to point any fingers. I'm here for us to join, to join hands in regards to how in fact we're going to fix this problem. We need to start with management, Mr. Al Young. We need to start with management. It starts from the top down as it relates to the VFW post. Secondly, we need to talk about security, how in fact we're going to address the true security needs that we need to, 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 to secure the perimeters. The outdoor telephone, Mr. DeFiori, as well as uh, public works, um, I want to see that telephone gone. So whatever I need to do, whatever we need to do as a city, I want that telephone gone because it in itself is a, is a major problem. Uh, Mr. Al Young mentioned as far as high crime in this area. You know, I beg to differ. I beg to differ because there's many locations around the city that I can point to that has a higher crime rate than West Las Vegas. So I beg to differ. But one thing I will agree with you, Mr. Young, is you mentioned taking the necessary steps to correct the problem. And that's what I'm here to do today, take the necessary steps to correct that problem and to correct that negative element that hovers over West Las Vegas. You know, initially, I had no problem with revoking the license at the VFW post. I don't, I, I, and, and to this day, I don't have a problem with revoking the license. But, you know, the post has been around for a very long time. And it has helped a lot of people in this community, and it continues to help a lot of people in this community. And what I did not want is, was to be left with a boarded up, blighted building in an area that's turning around. That's what I didn't want to be left with if in fact I were to take the license. Because I believe that the, that the doors are shut. And I don't want that. And, and that doesn't help anybody. But what I would like to do today, Mayor and Council, just shy of revoking the license, I would like to reduce the hours of operation, adjust the hours of operation, being that the majority of the crimes that have been committed are after hours, into the dark. And so for that, my recommendation would be, number one, uh, to, and Mr. Z. Fiori, if you'll come to the microphone, please. I would like to address the security as far as making sure that the security officers have the appropriate credentials in order to bring a level of security to this location would be number one. So how in fact would uh, you suggest we do that? Because I know that at a couple of the convenience stores just south of this location, we've placed some restrictions in, re in respect to security personnel. I would recommend. And if, in fact, if security guards meet that, I want to make sure that they're still able to use those security guards. But I want to make sure that we have a level of, of security force to, to work with our law enforcement would be number one. Go ahead. As we have done before on other occasions, the security where it becomes a condition on a license, the recommendation here would be a licensed security firm. When, when, it's, when, it's, when you have a licensed security firm, they go through a background investigation with the Privilege License Investigative Board operated by the state of Nevada. Currently, right now, our code does not address work cards for employed security. So a licensed security firm would, would cover the concerns that I hear today about whether or not these individuals are suitable as security guards. Um, so that would be my recommendation on the security. So let me ask you this question. As far as work cards, would a, would a private individual have the, or, or uh, their security guard, um, as far as work cards, would they have the opportunity to go and receive the work card in order to maintain that security? Because Mr. Young mentioned that there is someone that works for a company that has the credentials, and I just want to make sure if there's an extra step as far as getting 
a, whether it be a, a sheriff's card or a work card that will provide that level of security if that's possible. It's not a requirement of the code that a security that is employed by, in this case, the VFW, has to have a work card. It is a state requirement that a private security firm has to go through a background investigation, has to have a work card issued by the state of Nevada. Is that a condition that I can place on the record for, in fact, that individual for, for this location to, to do that? I would defer to our city attorney on that. It's not required by code. It seems to me that if you're going to fashion a condition and you want to add an additional condition that there be a local work card issued in addition to a state work card, I think you could do that. Okay. Then I would like to do that. I would like to make that a part of the record in one of my conditions. Also, I would like to encourage the members, Mr. Young, yourself, and your board members to take part in First Tuesday, which is Metro's First Tuesday, so that we can start building a better relationship with our local law enforcement and so that as things arise, we can have a line of contact and line of communication that will work hand in hand. We need to work better with our local law enforcement. And I know the issues and the concerns that we've had with our local law enforcement as it relates to perception in our community. But we have to start somewhere in order to basically, you know, close that gap and truly build a line of communication so that we can have a level of comfort and safety when we're communicating with our law enforcement and also when they show up to the scene to provide them with the information that they need in order to solve the crimes. And that's another thing that we need to do, but that's a whole other topic within itself as far as sharing information so that Metro can do their job as well. Outdoor. Well, we spoke about the outdoor telephone and the hours that I would like to see take place. Currently, their hours of operation is 2 to 11.30 p.m. during the week and 12 noon till 10 p.m. on the weekend. I would like to set the hours of operation to 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Monday through Sunday. And that would be my recommendation unless the other council members would have comments. All right. Thank you. We'll take that in the form of a motion. I think we're ready to vote. Your Honor, before you vote on the motion, I want to make sure that I understood it. The last time that we had a motion regarding conditions on this license, there was some confusion and some of those conditions were not included in the license. This motion would limit the hours of operation from, in addition to the conditions that already exist, you want to keep those conditions, change the hours from 9 to 9, and then add license security that also has a local work card in addition to the state work card? That is correct. I just want to put on the record that the work cards are Metropolitan Police Department work cards. They're not City of Las Vegas work cards. Mr. Henry, maybe you can speak to this. I want to make sure that we don't put ourselves in a position of doing something that we can't legally do. I may have misunderstood, but based on what I understood, I am concerned. I thought I heard Mr. DeFiori say that prior experience shows there's no way for him or Metro to enforce private security employees of a business. So that it was his recommendation, if you want a security condition on the license, that the business be compelled to hire an outside contractor that runs a security business. And because under state law, the security guards provided by that outside contractor are licensed, are investigated and licensed by state authorities. And then I heard something about, and in addition to that, I want the guy that's already working there to work for the outside contractor and get a work card from us. Let me clarify a couple of things. Let me clarify a couple of things. The VFW posts, as they exist today, I know that financially they wouldn't be able to maintain an outside security company, firm, due to their revenue stream. What I'm trying to do is work with them and they work with themselves in regards to the number of people that are sitting here in this audience. I know that between the security 
personnel as well as their membership would stand up and assist the security that they have selected and have been working with over the years to help protect their property. So I don't want to place um, a firm um, to, 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 ha to, to place uh, as far as security at this location. What I want them to do is continue to work with the security that they're, that they're comfortable with, but also the men and women in this audience to, to assist in the process. But those individuals who are considered security, I want them to make, I want to make sure that they have the proper credential, um, as far as the additional step of the work card, so that it brings a level, a level of, of comfort for we as a city at the same time. If I understand the law, we as a city have no work, no work card requirement or investigation, investigative framework for employees of individual employers designated as uh, security within that business. Uh, the only way to get that is to go to state licensed firms that provide security guards. Right. But I hear you say that you don't believe they could afford to do that. So I'm, I'm not sure there's a way to, under the law, if I, could jump in. Law. Mr. Jovic, if I could jump in, Mr. Henry, I just spoke with uh, Mr. D. Fiore, and uh, I believe he was in communication with the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department. There is no code provision, as Mr. Henry indicated, for issuing a work card for an individual who's an employee of any establishment, let alone the VFW. So it's going to either be a security individual that they hire that's not a member of a firm that won't have a work card, that won't have credentials as you wish, or it's going to be someone from a licensed security firm that right. does. There's okay. no in between. Yes, if you don't mind. Uh, Councilman Barlow, I'm not sure, but I think that even if we go through the private security companies, that they're not that expensive. I'm not positive, but I, I, I think they're still available for reasonable hourly rates. Mr. Young, would, would you please approach the microphone, please? Mr. Young, what I would like is to have uh, some level of security, a, a, great, a greater level of security than what we currently have. You mentioned that you have three individuals who serve as security officers and one working for another firm. What is the other firm the security officer works for? They work for, uh, for a casino there, yeah, but they're private security though. I don't know the name of it very quick. Now, what's the hours that you have? Was it nine to nine? No, we're not. We're not speaking about the hours, Mr. Young. We're talking about security. I'm right talking now. about security now. Okay. With the hours we have from nine to nine, and the security we have, I'm pretty sure that I can work with them, and we can come up with some reasonable amount of uh, protection for the uh, members here. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Just to clarify, while Mr. Young is here with Council's permission, the VFW post right now, you are in good standing with National? Correct. Well, my, my concern is, and I don't think it's your problem, I think it's something that's just grown over 30 or 40 years how long the post has been open, but uh, we're dealing with such a specific license, the club component, very privileged. The group that you represent, I think, puts even a larger burden of responsibility on you to be above others. And my, my question is, I guess you don't have to answer this, but you, you need to think about it. Are you able to? get to the point from a management standpoint that the city wants you to be at, Metro wants you to be at, the council wants you to be at, despite what's, I guess, a culture of this corner. And that, that's for you to decide, but it's such an important issue because we've been fortunate to date that there hasn't been 
anything more serious than some of the charges that have been brought. And they are certainly of a nature that has brought us to the point today. But I would just ask, uh, most of the fraternal organizations that I'm familiar with, including VFW, is there some way that you could create a formal club membership card and it's a policy decision but it's a, and a management decision, but you need, from my perspective, and for my comfort in supporting the councilman's motion, there has to be a conscious effort, you as the manager and your membership, that you move back towards this being a fraternal organization, a club, and not what it's grown into, perhaps beyond your ability to prevent it, but that, to me, is just a critical issue your ability and your desire to move it back to a VFW club privileged license. And you can control certainly what happens inside the club, hopefully control better outside in the parking lot. But the, I, I would be not as accommodating if we're here in a year and someone forgot their cam, uh, TAM card, uh, someone forgot the membership list, or some. Those are management responsibilities that I think you and the club need to step up and address. If we don't, if we don't get to the core okay. transition to a true club privileged license, I think we'll be back here in three months or six months or a year. And that's my biggest concern, that it, if you don't decide to change or become more strict or more formalized in your management policy, I don't think we can make this work. Your question is, could I handle it? That was you asking me? Yeah. yeah. Okay. That question requires the cooperation of the members of the FW, the National Department, the Police Department, the City of Las Vegas, and myself. We need to work together. Uh, as you said, on the membership uh, of the, uh, the uh, cards, they're kind of confusing because uh, all my employees have their cards. They all have cards, all of them. Including myself. There had been a case where one was maybe left out in the car, but they all have, because there was one card that was written on a mistake where the, the initiative and also took the same receipt and written it up inside for the uh, bartender. But we need to all work together. Yes, we can handle it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Are you serious? Mr. Mayor, I would just like to say I agree with what uh, Councilman Brown is saying. In fact, one of my notes was that there were certain management responsibilities. And you say, well, I can take care of it. But, but what he's saying is, could you set in place, uh, and I, in many organizations to which I belong, I have a card, some have picture ID, some don't. You might want to have a picture ID here to make sure who your members are that are coming in. I don't know. Somebody might be coming in that you don't know about or is new or something like that. But isn't that what you're saying, Councilman, that you need an ID card system that could be checked for the people who come in? And maybe uh, that plus ha uh, determining where the weaker areas are. Do you need somebody at the door, for example? Uh, do you have to make sure where they sign in? Is that clearly posted? Just things like that because you've been thrust into a situation that's been developing for a long time and those type of things are good suggestions. So I'm wondering if one of the conditions could be uh, what Councilman Brown has suggested, that an identification card, or perhaps a picture identification card, be given to each member. That's not a very big expense, and yeah. that would help you, I think, in managing. Yeah. All the members of the have membership cards. They all have cards. Now, it has been discussed in the past that we have uh, GFW members, uh, uh, associate member cards for the members. And I work for the guests. We can make cards for the guests and making sure we have to walk in the door there and who the sponsors are. This has been addressed before in the meetings we had there. And, and, that's, and, and for me, Mr. Young, that's exactly what I'm talking about as far as conditions to basically okay. help, help yourself so that we can help each other. Um, one thing that I would like to, um, going back to the security real briefly, um, I would like for, um, just to be clear, come back up real quick, please. I would like for your security officers 
um, to meet with Mr. DeFiori so that we can um, verify their level, their level of experience and a few things that I would like for your security guards, a few thresholds I would like for your security guards to, to meet is um, they can either be a retired uh, personnel from a security firm, an ex-police officer, or someone that's moonlighting. Um, but I, that's the level of experience I'm looking for as far as security personnel. Do, do, do you agree to those conditions? Correct. Now we have the one certified security guard is moonlighting. Okay. Well, as long as they meet Mr. DeFiori's uh, uh, policy and procedure criteria as it, as it relates to security, then I'm, I'm comfortable with that. Is that something you, you're amenable to? Yes, it is. Okay. Mr. DeFiori, um, did, did I coin that according to your rules in, in, in finance? I'm, I'm sorry, in um, business license? Well, this is going to be a difficult process because I know, and working with Mr. Young on this, if we have a retired security personnel um, that maybe that maybe has a criminal record more recently after he retired, then I don't know that we have by code the ability to say, no, Mr. Young, you can't have this person because we believe that the individual is not suitable for that particular employment and security. So. I'm not sure what the answer is, but I know that it might be putting us in a difficult position to make that judgment call. Well, well couldn't you just put a blanket that the previous crime or previous activities? Um, I mean, can't you put in some level? Uh, my concern is we're talking about this and talking about this. Mm -hmm. We've talked about this at other meetings, mm -hmm. and something has to be definitely put in there so uh, a bar is set for security. That's correct. And I think I think in other cases, and I'll, and I'll refer to um, the uh, Dell's market and also mm -hmm. family food market, we had conditions with security on those two establishments and they were licensed private security firms. Mm -hmm. So um, that would be a council's consideration. I, as far as the individuals and their, their suitability, uh, without it established in code, I don't know if we can actually be in a position to say, no, you can, or no, you can't. Well, will we have the ability to put the burden on the DFW Post for them to get the background check done as far as the criminal record and have them pay for the expense, but they would have to submit to the city uh, for proof as one of their conditions that the background has been met, which the background, I'm sure, is less than 100 bucks to do, and and then they submit to us who their security personnel is. If I could, um, we're, we're not talking about licensing a security guard here or giving a work card or not giving a work card. We're trying to find that elusive thing somewhere between somebody with a gun saying their security and a licensed security firm, which is clearly unaffordable by the VFW. And I think what the councilman is trying to craft is some kind of compromise that isn't contained within the code so much as it is contained within the discretion of the business licensing director. This is a condition on the license that we're talking about, not a work card issuance or non-issuance for an individual who's going, to, who's going to conduct security. So I think if the motion contains a requirement that the VFW hire security uh, of a type that has a background in security, enforcement and background in it, then it will be up to Mr. DeFiori to decide whether or not that individual is either going to be a retired police officer or going to be retired security or current security moonlighting or somebody else moonlighting. And I think it's well understood that it's within Mr. DeFiori's discretion to say, however, there are other things that would say that person is not qualified. Since they retired, they committed a felony. I think the VFW knows that if Mr. DeFiori found that kind of background, he would say, you don't meet the condition of this license. Are we, are we in agreement on that, Mr. Bell and, and Mr. Young? Probably yeah. Sure. Okay. Yes. Um, All right. Could I, I, I didn't get to finish. I just right. want to say my last request would be that in addition to um, uh, meeting on the first Tuesday that you had suggested, uh, could, could Mr. Young and any members of his leadership team meet with Bolden Area Command Community Policing representatives and evaluate what we've done so far and has it helped and what else do we need to do. For example, is the lighting adequate that was recommended before? Was it put in? 
Yes, it was. Then it is bold and area feel it's sufficient or is more needed. Secondly, uh, should we lock all the gates? Would that be something that would help? Bold and area might be able to tell us on that. Uh, thirdly, um, any should we put cameras in the parking lot? And if so, uh, where? I'm just saying that the great resource of knowledge that Metro has in community policing could really help there in evaluating what do we have and what could we do to make it better. Correct. So I'm suggesting if it could be part, I don't, was that a condition about the first Tuesdays no. or was that a recommendation? No, that was a recommendation. Well, I'm suggesting would you agree today to meet with Metro Policing and the representatives there, uh, community policing uh, from Bolden area uh, to follow through in what I'm suggesting? Yes, I will. Right. I, that would make me feel a lot better. <laughs> and going back to the going back to the members, um, I would also like um, for you to have a list of all of your members um, for uh, the sake of Metro as well as our uh, business license department, uh, whether it be at your bar or somewhere accessible, so that when they come through, they can see the entire list of your membership um, on dis on. Uh, on display when when asked to review it. Is that... That's already been put in place. I'm sorry? It's already been put in place. Well, great. And also, let me see, um, the guests, the guests of your members, being that um, when they come in, the issue was they didn't know who they were guests of. I would like to also, um, if in fact someone's coming in as a guest, that... Um, what do you do currently if I come in as a guest of, of, of one of your members and that member leaves? What happens to the guest? The, the guest could stay if, if the guest is a, a, a notable member and if we don't know him, then he has to leave. But most of the guests are, are guests and we know who they are already. And do they sign in under... What is the procedure as far as I'm coming in as a guest? Do I sign in and basically say that I came in with Mr. Al Young? Well, you sign in as a member and you sign in as a sponsor. Okay. Then, then that would be my, my motion, Mayor. Um, <laughs> with, but I do want to make one note that all the previous conditions are to remain. All of the other special conditions prior to this meeting will remain on record uh, for the DSW post 10057. All right, thank you. Um, before we take the vote, I'd just like to uh, express uh, uh, to Metro our thanks for you being here and for the job that you're uh, doing out there and for the job that you have to continue to do out there because I disagree with a lot of what I've heard today. I don't think that this... Um, Veterans Post is the cause of the problem. I think that uh, there are some... Uh, uh, no, no, please, please, folks, no. I think that there are some um, uh, that tweaking and regulations that you have to do in order to make uh, yourself more accessible to Metro's needs, but uh, this is a uh, problem that is far more uh, endemic uh, to our community uh, than just the fact that we have a Veterans Post out there with activity taking place across the street or in a parking lot and the like, and I applaud you for your determination uh, in accord with your obligation and the public trust that we have in you to continue to make sure that all of our community, not just pockets of our community, but all of our community uh, is uh, law-abiding and safe for all of our citizens uh, without just reference to particular parts of the community that uh, may be of some interest as far as today's uh, proceedings are concerned. I want to thank uh, the um, uh, citizens uh, who are here today for the um, the way you uh, uh, conducted yourselves and uh, uh, the course of this uh, meeting. I know that you are very concerned that uh, your rights and privileges are being protected, but I think we all said it at the same time. This has to be a partnership. It, uh, this is one community. It's, it's not the West Side versus. It's not City Hall not liking. Uh, this is um, Las Vegas. This is the Las Vegas that um, uh, we want to, to uh, be proud of, uh, and, and we want our veterans to be uh, taken care of uh, so that they feel that they're a vital part of our community, and we've got to work together. It's that simple. 
we've got to work together. We can't work apart. We can't fight each other. We can't resist. We have to work for the common good. So with that, let's vote on the motion. Mayor Goodman, I'm sorry. I just want to ask for a clarification regarding the security guard issue, because I'm a little unclear. Um, the last I heard was that Mr. Fiore is going to have oversight, and he is going to be the one who's going to decide whether the security guard fits That's correct. the framework that we want it to be? Is that what that's, we're voting on? That's my understanding. That's, that's correct. Mr. D. Fiore, do you feel comfortable being able to work within that framework? Because as I see it, the security guard is a, a big issue here. And then I'll shut up. Well, even if I am able to approve the credentials of a security guard, I still am uncomfortable with the fact that if, if, if there are violations, if there are, are problems with the security out there, um, it's, it's really my burden of re responsibility uh, to prove that uh, it's the, the security that I've approved is now the problem of, of, of the community. And I think that that's, that's why going to a private security firm, you have a board that regulates that. You have a board that can take action on that particular security firm. Councilman Barlow, with your permission, say, I'm going to support your motion because I think the spirit of what we're trying is being accomplished. But I just, from a technical standpoint, we may be back here because of this vagueness in that one particular item. That's, that's all I'm going to say. And, and I can respect that, Councilman, and thank you for that. And, and, and I really um, appreciate the, the support that the Council has given me as far as how I'm uh, trying to work with um, a group that, you know, as I stated, I mean, they're a very reputable, credible group. And I just understand also, at the end of the day, their financial structure. Um, but I can also make uh, placed on the on the record uh, as, as another condition if it makes this council more comfortable that if in fact the security is not working out suitable to uh, the city of Las Vegas standards then we will have to move up to um, a, a, a off-site security operator whereas possibly um, I hate to talk about taxes but maybe we raise the fees of the members a little bit in order to pay for that to help offset that because we're talking about a place that we all have frequented and you all have frequented longer than some of you had frequented before I was even born. And so, you know, it's not something that I'm looking to go away of, something that I'm looking for to continue to keep the reputable, incredible uh, fabric of this, of this uh, organization. So um, I, I, have not, I have not a problem with moving forward with adi attaching an additional condition that if, in fact, the security that Mr. Uh, Young has brought forward to protect the interest of the lodge, I'm sorry, the lodge, the um, the post, thank you. Um, I'm a member of the Masonic Lodge, thank you. Um, that the that we will move forward with the technical piece that uh, Councilman Wolfson mentioned to come back to uh, enforce a, a um, outside security operation. Is that agreeable? Mm -hmm. Very good. All right, let's vote. Yep. Are we going to have a review of this application? Did you want to review Councilman Barlow? Uh, let me, I'll move forward to, Mr. D. Fury, what, a 12 month review? Well, we're always under review for that purpose, for that yeah. matter. Uh, just, not, just to see how, in fact, the security works out over time. I, I would recommend a six month review. Okay. All right. Um, so, Councilman? Let's, let's move forward with, We'll, we'll move forward with a 12-month review. All right, that's the motion. Let's vote. Opposed? Motion carries. All right, the citizens' participation was heard under the January 16, 2008 City Council meeting and we're therefore adjourned. Mayor, before you adjourn, may the record reflect that I've lodged with the clerk a copy of the notebook that I've referred to in these proceedings. The record will still reflect.